only Lord Ruler Brandon Sanderson could write basically a combined 130 pages and give me this much to talk about. So let's talk about Hope of Elantris and the Emperor's Soul. I wish that I could know you. Not your soul, but you. I've read about you, I've seen into your heart. I've rebuilt your soul as best I could, but that isn't the same. It isn't knowing someone isn't. That's knowing about someone. There was rarely an obvious branching point in a person's life. People change slowly over time. You didn't take one step, then find yourself in a completely new location. You first took a little step off a path to avoid some rocks. For a while, you walked alongside the path, but then you wandered out a little way to step on softer soil. Then you stopped paying attention as you drifted farther and farther away. Finally, you found yourself in the wrong city, wondering why the signs on the roadway hadn't led you better. Hey, what's up, bookworms and Cosmere fans? Today, we are wrapping up our journey to the Celis system by talking about the Hope of Elantris and the Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson, the Lord Ruler, if you will. These are all stories connected to Elantris. If you don't know what Cell is, that is the planet that it is connected on. I read it from the copy of Arcanum Abounded that had an unbounded, I always want to say unbound, unbounded that actually contains a lot of Cosmere stories, but it has the Hope of Elantris and the Emperor's Soul in it. Uh, there's actually like a hardcover release now, I believe, of Emperor's Soul, but uh, I like this one because it has a really cool star chart that shows you where all the planets are, and of course, I mean, I gotta have my Sanderson stuff signed, right? Uh, so, very, very handsome collection, obviously. It's the first time I actually cracked it open since I got it because I was like, I don't know where these stories connect to, and I didn't want to actually, you know, touch on it too much, but uh, it, it made it for quick reading. Uh, like I said, the Hope of Elantris is only like 25 pages, and uh, and Emperor's Soul, 100 pages, in and out, in and out. And I think that this is something, uh, 100 pages, that's something Brandon Sanderson could doodle uh, while he was, you know, uh, waiting for his coffee at Hardy's in the morning or something like that. Hardy, you guys got Hardy's where you're at? Yeah, anyway, uh, I don't even think we got Hardy's out here in Texas anymore. I don't even know what I'm thinking there. Uh, from Atlanta originally, we had Hardy's out there. I don't not expect to be talking about Hardy's today, but let's get into it, guys. What we're going to do here is, uh, if you missed my Elantris review, I'll put it right here for you that is full spoilers, but just to let you know, guys, Cosmere videos, if they are not a Why You Should Read, are going to be full spoilers. So this is going to contain spoilers for The Hope of Elantris and The Emperor's Soul. So if you haven't read them, I'd recommend that you do. Uh, I'd say go ahead and bookmark this video, come back to it after you read because we are going to get into the nuts and bolts here and I'm going to talk about what I was thinking while I was reading this and how it's kind of connecting uh, this world of Cell all together even though they take place at different parts of the planet. So let's begin with Hope of Elantris. Now this little doodle, and I call it a doodle because I imagine Brandon Sanderson can write 25 pages in his sleep, right? Uh, it's a doodle basically that is Ashe's statement, uh, his testament if you will, to Raiden on what he was doing during the span of time in Elantris when the restoration was happening. So uh, it's kind of like a, uh, a secondhand telling of the, basically, uh, where I, I compared this to a deleted scene uh, because it really does feel like something that could have been in uh, Elantris and he just kind of wanted to shove it back in there somewhere. But it kind of makes sense to do it as like a short story here. But namely the story is about a young girl named Matisse and what is she is doing during the invasion of Erelon. Now, Matisse is tasked with looking after the children in New Elantris. You know, obviously that was something that was very much put to the forefront in Karada's story. Uh, but uh, Karada's second in command is uh, Dashe, and he has become like a father figure to Matisse. And he talks to her about practicing her aeons and uh, about how they're, they're, you know, they're trying to set up an education system inside New Elantris. And he talks to her about adding what he calls a chasm line. Exactly 
what all this is. I'm not going to lie, guy. Door and Aeons are still kind of confusing to me. So if you want me to explain a Chasm line to you, look in the comments. I'm sure someone else will. Uh, I sort of get it, but not enough to where I'm going to be able to break it down and explain it to you in, uh, in, in elementary, you know, like you're a six-year-old, and to, to understand this stuff. But Ashe shows up, and he tells Dashe that the shipment of weapons that, you know, Hoyd was tasked with bringing has arrived, and Matisse asks if she can stay and talk to Ashe. Now, before they can get too deep into the discussion, he's telling her about, like, uh, hey, you should get your own say on. You know, Sereni got one when she was your age. Uh, they hear distant screams, and Ashe flies off to see what's up, and he returns to tell Matisse that the uh, is it Fjordel? I said Fjordel. Yeah, F-J-O-R-D-E-L-L. -L. Fjordel army. They're invading the city and headed her way. Um, so she begins to think of a plan to move these children to a safer part of the city. Basically means a dirtier, non-restored part of the city is where they won't be looking for them. But, you know, they're chased by the Fjordel soldiers and Ashi distracts them so Dashi can kind of blindside them. And he tries fighting them off. There's too many of them. He's overwhelmed, overrun, and he takes a sword through the torso. You know, anyone that gets around Karata, man, it's just no, good things don't happen to him. Uh, he tells her to run, but she screams, and the soldiers see her, and she starts drawing an Aeon, which is the symbol for light, I believe, because uh, she completes it with the chasm line, and it just is super bright light, and it blinds them enough to where she can run away. Uh, but as she's running, her leg is eventually injured, and as you know, that is bad news for Elantrian since they do not heal. So uh, she realizes she has run in a circle when she comes upon the body of Dashe again. You know, she embraces him as the soldiers kind of surround her. And uh, they demand the location of the children. And the ground begins to shake. And if you've read Elantris, you know what's going on right now. And then she feels her wounds healing. She feels her heart begin beating again. But, you know, the interrogating soldier just decides, well, you know what? That means you can just die now. I can just kill you now. But Dashe lets this soldier know. Hey, yo, uh, she wasn't the only one that was healed during this. And he runs him through with the same sword that had run him through a few pages before. <clears throat> now, as Ashe kind of wraps up this story to Raiden, uh, he explains that the Seon that Dashe gave to Matisse was Ao, which means bravery. And Raiden nods in approval. So uh, my thoughts on this is obviously very short. That's why I didn't want to do a video just about Hope of Elantris because there's not a ton to unwrap here. Uh, it just kind of flushes out you know, missing segments. I, I guess you call, like I said, they call it like a deleted scene. I can't think of anything better to call it than a deleted scene. It's like when you buy a Blu-ray and they have some deleted scenes from a movie and you'd be like, oh, you know, either that one, I can see why they deleted it, or man, I wish they'd left that in the movie. Sure, I'd love to, this been kind of cool to leave it in the book, but uh, I think there was so much going on in that third act of Elantris that uh, I, I don't really think there was room for it. So I don't know the history, if he really read, if this is something that he actually cut from his original story or if this was him just wanting to add on to it. I, I, I don't know these things. Uh, but I just know that when Brandon Sanderson writes, we usually read and listen, right? And uh, that brings me to talking about The Emperor's Soul. I'm going to spoil it up front, guys. This was phenomenal. Uh, it, this takes place in Cell as well, on a different, different side of the planet. And you know what? I, I don't know if it's just because he's become such a better writer or it's just a more intriguing story. But uh, he's talked about returning to Elantris to write sequels. I'd rather see sequels to Emperor's Soul. Because uh, I really like the protagonistness. I like the whole idea. I like the magic system. Everything about it is really, really awesome. And I'd like to see more of this character much more than I would Rayodin and Sereni. Uh, that's just me, personally. Uh, I, I don't know if it's just because it was such a quick hit or what. 100 pages, this could have been a few hundred more. I'd have been really, really into the story. So if he wants to do like a deleted scenes for Emperor's Soul, I, I'm for it. I would definitely like to see more of this world more than I'd like to see of, of Rayodin and company. But let's get into it. In the Emperor's Soul is a story about 100 days in a prison for a forger named Shy. Now, a forger is someone who can change a specific form for some type of extra normal event. I mean, really, it's it's what it sounds like forgery is. You know, you can copy things, uh, except we're using uh, Sanderson's investiture here, you know, his his magic system. And I believe it is also kind of associated with door. I believe everything in the cell is kind of associated with door. But again, that's a magic system that uh, takes some time to kind of get through the nuts and bolts of. But I feel like I understand this one, understand it? Understood this one much better than I understood uh, Aeon's. Uh, but again, let's talk about Emperor's soul here. Now, Emperor Ashavan, he has been the target of an assassination. It was mostly successful. His wife was killed, and he took a crossbow boat through the head. 
and uh, it's kind of left him in a vegetative state. Their whole, uh, I believe their surgeon, they call it like resealing, where they're able to save his life, but, you know, but he's just non-responsive now. He's crapping his pants and stuff, you know, he's having to wear diapers, and he, like I said, he's just a vegetable. But uh, they've, they've, they've kept it a secret from the kingdom, and they feel like they've got this, uh, this mourning period. There's a mourning period for 100 days. Uh, where he can mourn his wife and stay out of the public eye. So this group of arbiters, they're kind of scared of losing their power more than they are saving the emperor. Uh, they wonder if Shai can forge him a new soul during this hundred days that he's allowed to stay out of the public eye. Uh, so Shai, she agrees to do so for a payment of essence marks, even though she does not think that this is possible. But she figures she can use this 100 days to try to escape, right? Now, an essence mark is a soul stamp that forges a person's memories and souls. The thing is, it only lasts a short time. Now, that's as simple as I can explain it here. Uh, at least it's as simple as I'm going to try to explain uh, what an essence mark is. But one of the arbiters is named Gatonia, and he works closely with Shai during the process. And uh, it actually is curious he's actually kind of curious why she chooses to forge forge with her incredible talents instead of being an original artist and creating her own things but uh he also brings to her attention that they are using a blood sealer to keep her from escaping as someone who actually takes her blood makes like a, a ward on the door and she cannot escape very intimidating very frightening uh, i'd actually be interested in hearing more about these blood sealers because as far as i know this is the first mention of the cosmere uh, of one of these things. But this is where someone will tell me, oh, no, this this 48th character that you missed in Stormlight Archive somewhere was a blood sealer. Uh, that's usually what happens here. But like I said, when I was reading uh, Mistborn in Stormlight, I wasn't looking for these connections. So if there's been another blood sealer in the Cosmere yet, I didn't know about it, but I'd be interested in hearing more. So it's around day or five, day five, I think, uh, Shy realizes this is an impossible task. But again, she's just going to put up a front like she's trying to do it while she plans out how to escape. Now, she gets access to the Emperor's personal journals to try and learn more about him. And this, the Emperor had always said if he died, he wanted these burned. He did not want anyone to read them. But they figure, hey, he's not dead. So, okay. So she reads more about it, trying to learn a lot about him. Uh, and, and, and we get into um, some real matic theory in this. And that actually really surprised me. And if you don't know real matic theory, that's... Uh, you know, where you describe the three realms, uh, cognitive, spectral, and physical, uh, and, and spiritual. Spiritual? Spectral? Anyway, she is actually aware of the three realms, and, and she describes them to Catonia. Now, as far as I know, this is the first time outside of Stormlight that a character has even been aware of this. So that's very cool. Uh, if it happened, I know someone said maybe Sezed talked about it at the end of Mistborn. I, I don't know. I'll get into that when I get to Mistborn, when I talk about Mistborn in Mistborn March. We'll talk about that. But as far as my memory goes, this is the first time that anyone outside of the Stormlight Archive has mentioned Realmatic Theory. It's a nice little tie-in there. Uh, she explains that she needs... Uh, sorry, this is Shy we're talking about. Shy explains that she needs to test the stamps on someone and Gatonia volunteers. And now, the first one works, sort of. Uh, Gatonia remembers the Emperor's brother that passed away when they were young. And the second one, which is for why he became Emperor in the first place, fails. And then they argue about her not becoming a real artist. And then Gatonia is pissed when she admits to burning the real copy of the painting she forged and got, in throw, got thrown into jail for in the first place. And she replaced it with her copy and no one knew. Uh, so yeah, he's very, very angry about this. Uh, is It was a, a very, very rare painting. And uh, yeah, it's understandable why he's upset about it. Uh, the thing that actually, when the story starts to turn a little bit, is Shai starts to actually care about Ashravan the more she learns about him. And she finds she does actually want to help him. Now, the stamp for why Ashravan became emperor, uh, it's around day 70 or so, I think, when it finally takes. And it turns out that it depended on his relationship with Katonia. And Katonia is pretty much the only one of the arbiters that wants Ashravan back for a reason other than to keep his power. You know, he cares for Ashravan. He, you know, he had a relationship with him. So it, it makes a lot of sense why why it's working with Gatonia. But as her and Gatonia, they continue to bond. Uh, but she explains that she burned that painting because the original artist was her trainer and he asked her to. Uh, so nice little tie-in there. And if you, you know, we go back to this world again, I wouldn't mind seeing like a, a, a book about 
uh, her being trained under this artist. I think that would be really interesting and help uh, understand for the forging, the forging, forging thing a little clearer uh, than it really explains in this book. I'd like to see the training of what all goes behind this because it's very, very, very intriguing. So it's on day 98. Shai finishes the essence mark and the blood seal fails on her door. This makes her escape possible, but instead of just escaping, she makes her way to the emperor's chambers and she stamps him and the mark takes. And Ashravan comes to and he tells her that she needs to escape while she can. So she returns to Gatonia to tell him that the mark worked and they have a sad goodbye, almost like a father-daughter relationship here at this point, and she gives him a book before she flees. Now she uses an essence mark here, and this is where it kind of like comes to like plugging into the matrix. Because I wasn't sure where they were going with this. And I just realized that this is where Sanderson's like, you know what? I've had this whole book with no action. i got to put some action in here, right? So she uses an essence mark to become a Shizan. A Shizan basically is Sanderson for badass warrior. At least that's how I interpreted it. And she fights her way out of the prison. And uh, she's fighting these uh, the beasts that the blood sealers make and stuff like that. And she tells the blood sealer basically who had been writing letters to his girlfriend. He mentioned, go home. Your girlfriend misses you. It's kind of a humorous, humorous little scene there. But uh, again, no one writes action like Sanderson. It's really cinematic in a way that he describes things. And uh, <clears throat> she gets out, and Gatonia meets the new Ashravan as a ama- and is amazed at how similar he is to the old Ashravan. So it appears everything works, right? But in the epilogue, this is where we get the little twist here. Gatonia reads the book that Shai gave him, where she reveals that the Emperor's new soul wasn't exactly the same as she made a few changes or improvements, if you will, that would prod him into becoming the emperor that he always wanted to be. And Gatonia burns the book as the story ends. And guys, I loved this story. Uh, I don't know if it was just because it was so straight to the point or what, but I want more. Uh, I left this wanting more. I wanted to know where she's going. Where is Shy going after this? Uh, what did she do before this? I just want a book about Shy at this point. I think it's one of his best Uh, protagonist that he's had yet and that's saying a lot i mean there's a lot of his protagonists that i love so i mean i love dalinar i love shallan i love sezed i love vin and elan i loved a lot of most of them i liked uh so uh i'm i'm amazed that he's still able to pull out in 100 pages and make you care about a character like this i mean that's just that's why we read sanderson man he's the master he's the lord ruler right and i mean i absolutely love this i want more I want more. I definitely want him to revisit this character, and I feel like the feedback that he's gotten off of it, I think he might realize that people want more of this character and of this side of Cell. And like I said, if you're doing Elantra sequels, if you aren't going to give me this side, how about at least have where she escapes to is the Elantra side, and at least insert Shy into the Elantra side of the story. So that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping it's a if we're going to get a sequel, it's going to be kind of a a hybrid of these two sides of the planet. So that's what I want going forward. Uh, so I absolutely loved it, guys. Um, Hope of Elantris, sure, read it. It won't take you that long. But I, I kind of felt like it, like I did about Elantris. It was fine. It was fine. It's nothing that's going to like keep me up at night thinking about. Whereas, uh, the, whereas Emperor's Soul was in my head for two days after I finished it. And to me, that's just the mark of a really, really great told, greatly told story. And who does that better than Sanderson right now? I know I keep saying that, but it's, it's just true. Uh, so where I'm at in the Cosmere right now, that wraps up our time in Cell, all the time in Lanster. So that was the plan for January was to get that out. In February, the only one that I have is Warbreaker. And this will be my first read of Warbreaker as well. And I have a lot of mixed uh, opinions on Warbreaker. A lot of people say it's like one of his best stories, but they didn't really care for the ending, which is weird to me because I always feel like uh, some of his stories that drag, the third act is so incredible, it rewards you and pays up for it. So I- I'm interested to see what that is. I think it was described to me as it's a book about trying to prevent war than going to war. And I'm here for that. Uh, I feel like Sanderson can have a really good take on something like that. Plus, I'm going to be reading now that beautiful Leatherbound edition that I can't get tired of talking about. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited for that. But uh, I'm finishing up, not finishing up, I, I'm doing my two Dresden Files books a month, uh, one Wheel of Time book a month, and then I also kind of want to fit uh, The Outsider by Stephen King in this month so I can get uh, get to that HBO series that I've heard good things about. 
But uh, Warbreaker, I'll be picking it up as soon as I'm done with Winter's Heart, which I think should be probably about a week or so. It usually takes about a week to finish a Wheel of Time book, uh, even when they're Elaine-centric. Uh, but that's a conversation for another time. So, guys, have you read uh, Have you read Ever Soul? Have you read Hope of Elantris? And if you've, talked, if you've read Elantris, uh, go ahead and drop in the comments, guys. Be careful of spoilers. For